to Susanna and Joseph Landa, a couple in Queens, Nye purchased a two million home adjacent to family for their retirement and to care for their disabled son. Their dream quickly turned into a nightmare when they discovered a squatter, Brett Floors, claiming an agreement with the former owner. Despite efforts to evict him, New York squatters' rights have complicated the process. The Landas are battling in court, facing delays caused by Flores' tactics and paying all expenses for a property they can't occupy. Don't miss, what legal rights do squatters have in New York? How did the Landas attempt to evict the squatter from their property? What challenges did the Landas face in resolving the situation with the squatter? Susanna and Joseph Landa bought what they thought was their dream retirement home in Douglaston, Queens. We're looking to hopefully retire and most of all, provide for my son, Alex, who has Down syndrome, he has a, a disability. We're looking to hopefully retire and most of all, provide for my son, Alex, who has Down syndrome. He has a disability. The family is deeply committed to ensuring the well-being of their son with special needs as they envision a peaceful retirement in the future. The new house is right next door to family members. I just wanna know that I can die tomorrow when He's next to his brother. I just want to know that I can die tomorrow when he's next to his brother. When seeking a perfect and safe home for one's family, the emotional importance of where one lives becomes paramount. They signed the deed back in October. And then what happens? The nightmare begins. The nightmare begins. Amidst deep anguish, a family struggles with intense emotional pain, feeling profoundly helpless and frustrated. The house came with something unexpected. A man living in their home, who they say, refuses to leave. We couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. They couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. The family is shaken by a surprising revelation, leading to a blend of surprise and suspicion. This revelation exposes an unexpected situation that challenges their sense of vulnerability and empathy. His name's Brett Flores. They cannot come here early when I'm not here. They have keys. They're the owner. This is what happened when the Landis tried to enter with an insurance inspector. They say Flores called the cops on them, even though they say they gave him 10-day notice. This is what happened when the Landis tried to enter with an insurance inspector. They say Flores called the cops on them, even though they say they gave him 10-day notice. To address family issues, people often turn to legal avenues in the hopes of finding a peaceful resolution. He wasn't a renter. Never. You didn't sign documents that said, we have a tenant. Correct. Court documents detail in Flores' own words why he's there. A signed statement says he was hired by the former homeowner as his caretaker, was paid $3,000 a week, and his employment ended in January of last year when the man died. He claims he has a license to stay in the house from the previous owner. What a lot of people don't realize is in New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. 30 days. How can you have rights if... You have no lease, you're not paying rent, so what is your right? Not only has Flores been living there, they claim he listed the home online to rent rooms to other people. Not only has Flores been living there, they claim he listed the home online to rent rooms to other people. Families are worried about property being misused and how it might affect safety and security. The only way to try and get him out? They're taking him to landlord-tenant court, trying to get him evicted. We have had already five hearings at civil court. We have had already five hearings at civil court. The family demonstrates relentless determination as they navigate through the complexities of the legal system, fueled by an unyielding desire to uphold justice. He shows up, no, no attorney. If it's not one excuse, is another excuse. He filed the bankruptcy. So that prevents everything from going forward. Meanwhile, they've been paying all the bills. Leaving wow. windows wide open. 24 hours. Including thousands of dollars in utilities. It makes me feel completely forgotten in the legal system. Not able to do anything. It makes me feel completely forgotten in the legal system. Not able to do anything. When dealing with the complexities of the legal system, facing frustration and disillusionment can be challenging. The need for empathy grows stronger when family support is lacking. As for Flores, no one answered the door. He did answer the phone. I'm doing my best to try to get your side of the story, so you're telling me to call your attorney? An attorney who told me? You're going to settle it through the court system. No comment. Our system is broken. We have no rights. We have no rights at all. Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Our system. We have no rights. We have no rights at all. Nothing. Zero.
The narrative highlights the shortcomings in the legal system's ability to protect and uphold rights. It does so by engaging the family's emotions, recognizing vulnerability and frustration, and fostering empathy. And this issue may not be resolved anytime soon. The next court hearing for this case isn't scheduled until April. The Landis story highlights the legal challenges homeowners face with squatters' rights in New York. The unexpected presence of Brett Flores and the complexities of eviction procedures are laid bare, emphasizing the need for legal reforms. The public is urged to consider the broader implications of property rights, tenant laws, and the impact on homeowners who find themselves entangled in legal battles, potentially leading to reforms in the system. Challenge the legitimacy of the couple's property rights and question the legal system seemingly permitting unlawful residents to reside in homes. Apprehensions arise regarding the imperative need for legal reforms to tackle scenarios where property owners grapple with limitations on their rights and unwarranted occupancy. Remedial actions can be implemented within the legal parameters, emphasizing the couple's individual accountability in navigating legal intricacies, underscoring the significance of personal choice. Extend empathy towards the couple's articulated frustration and helplessness, censoring legal proceedings that appear biased towards illegal residents, impeding the couple's enjoyment of their property. Advocate for active involvement of couples in legal proceedings, delving into potential solutions within the existing legal framework, levying criticisms at a system seemingly permitting illegal residents to lease accommodations, flagging concerns about the financial strain on couples due to bills and utility expenses. A scrutinize the concept of rights for illegal residents, casting doubt on the fairness of granting rights to those who haven't legally acquired or leased real estate. Call for legal reforms to ensure the proper safeguarding of property owners. Emphasize the responsibility of protecting property by urging couples to assert their rights and actively participate in legal proceedings. Express apprehensions about legal proceedings favoring illegal residents while motivating affected couples to play a proactive role in resolving situations within the established legal framework. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.